What's up, all you cool cats and kittens? Welcome to Respawn Aim Fire, the kick ass irreverent gaming podcast brought to you by Affable Idiots and Overalls. Bringing them back. They went away. They came back. Look at that. Look at that. You're already wearing a hoodie, which is a transitional step to overalls. Is that what that was an indication of? Yeah, I was pulling up my overalls. Here's the thing. Oh, you okay. say overalls went away. I live in Kentucky. No, they didn't. Okay. And okay. Okay. Well, that's, second they're of functional all, in Kentucky. <laughs> yes. Sir, the, the Appalachia part, not the part where I live. And Michael Myers, Mr. Coveralls. Similar. <gasps> you're right. You're Different, right. They do similar. have overall. Oh, my God. Oh my God, Adam! Coveralls are yeah. just overalls with a C. Yeah. Coveralls just have oh arms, and overalls only have the chest part. But arms yeah. have to start with a C because they're overalls with a C. It covers your whole chest. What if the arms are made of ocean fabric? <laughs> and then okay. it's the C, <laughs> but it's a different C. But they're oh, homophones. I see what you're saying. homophones. Mm -hmm. I'm Chad Michael, and it's one of your hosts, and we also have with us the venerable Adam Chili Pot Gumby. Sorry, chili's on the oh, brain. Oh, my chili! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I dropped it. Uh, welcome, everyone. We do this podcast weekly. Um, we record live on twitch.tv slash affableidiots, usually on Sunday evenings around 8.30 Eastern. But once again, for the, like... Probably third week in a row. We're doing a little bit different this time. And then we go on demand on YouTube and podcast services on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Holy shit, everyone. You don't know this, but the coolest person in the world just joined the podcast right now. <laughs> Sunglasses and a charming smile is Tom Hanks, the coolest person in the world right now. <laughs> Tom Hanks and call me Wolfman. Ow! <laughs> Tom Hanks, the wolf man. <laughs> Upcoming on this episode, Tom and I are going to talk about all sorts of things, from naked Animal Crossing people to PlayStation Game Pass. But we're going to start by talking about controversy around the Game Awards. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. What's Our going main on? quest today. I'm going to clap every syllable that I talk for the next one second. Oh. I'm done. Jeff Keighley, right. Activision, and the Game Awards. This is all coming information. It's like coagulated from um, multiple sources into one blood clot in the heart of the gaming industry that will cause I was cause thinking conge just... congealing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kotaku.com, an internet website on the World Wide Web, which you access by going to your browser, posted on Friday night, quote, the Game Awards won't take sides on Activision Fallout to focus on reveals. Jeff Keighley, who everyone knows, spells his name the most unique way you can. Um, he hosts the annual Game Awards show. This is its eighth year. It is a, he is the creator, and he told the Washington Post today that he's still thinking about how to navigate Activision Blizzard's involvement in the ceremony following the latest reports of sexual misconduct, misconduct at the publisher. Now, obviously, we know Activision Blizzard's been in hot water. We've talked about that in depth over the last, like, month and a half's worth of episodes but here's a quote from keely we want to support employees and developers keely added he supported people coming forward with their stories but also didn't want to diminish developers opportunities to spotlight their games says the washington post a couple of things the game awards actually is advised by a board featuring several companies across the industry including the president of activision blizzard blizzard rob kostich um, there was a video that recently began recirculating about Jeff Keighley, uh, where he actually did take a stand on something. Remember when Kojima, his best friend, long life soulmate, all that kind of stuff, um, was ousted from Konami. He took a stand on that on stage. And, uh, then he finally did tweet yesterday. If the, we're recording this on Sunday, he tweeted Saturday, uh, that he, he says, the Game Awards is a time of celebration for the industry, the biggest form of entertainment in the world. There is no place for abuse, harassment, or predatory, practice, predatory practices in any company or any community. I also realize we have a big platform which can accelerate and inspire change. We are committed to that, but we all need to work together to build a better and more inclusive environment so everyone feels safe to build the world's best games. 
And then this was all as replies actually to a tweet that says, outside of the nominations, Activision Blizzard will not be part of the Game Awards. So they will not have any kind of reveals. They will not have any kind of like sponsoring, any kind of op um, involvement at all outside of just the games they've been nominated for. It's a lot, uh, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on there. The Activision Blizzard is like bleeding into every other part of the industry right now. Game Awards are obviously a big thing; lots of eyes on them. Eighty-five million people watched last year. Um, Adam, I know you have a ton of thoughts on most of this content. There's one thing in here. Can you guess which one it is that you don't care about? I don't know. I, I assume. Um, <laughs> Adam, what, what are your thoughts around this? So just in general, I'll take it from the top thing where Jeff, uh, where people were like on Jeff size and on Jeff size. My number one issue is this thing at the top where on Friday night, Kotaku posted an article, the Game Awards won't take sides on Activision Fallout to focus on reveals. So on Twitter, all you saw was the retweet of just the headline. Sure from Kotaku, which people might have noticed. I don't ever use Kotaku because I feel that is the company that is clickbaitvideogame.com where it's just like, hey, what is the thing that is super aggressive and will get clicks? Like, that's basically all Kotaku writes. It's like, you're a fucking idiot because you play video games. And people were like, oh, shit, I'm mad I got to click on it. Because when you actually read what he says, by the way, I'm also not taking a side yet, just letting you know. Where the whole Washington Post thing where he's like, yeah, we're trying to navigate it. We want to focus on developers. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's what he actually said. And Kotaku responded to that with the headline of he refuses to take sides. Which the article, he was like, it's hard to navigate. I'm trying to focus on developers. All right, fine, whatever. That's where people got really pissed off about. And then people bring up the Konami and the Kojima thing. It's like, yeah, that's true. That is a thing that seems to contradict. But again, it was all stirred up, I think, mostly by Kotaku. Uh, I do like where he's, he says, you know, they're only included in nominations. The games are nominated. It's what it is. There's nothing else to do with them. My entire thing about that is it's like, it's difficult. But so it's a thing where he's not condoning what Activision does, but he's also not necessarily standing up against it. I would love to see him be like, hey, this kind of behavior is bad in the industry and we don't like this at all. Everyone will know we talk about Activision. If he wants to say their name specifically, that'd be even better. But I feel like he needs to take a stand and just like make the obvious known. I just don't like how Kotaku just like riles people up with like a half-hearted, you know, title to a to a story and doesn't actually like take a stand on it. So yeah, I want Jeff to take a stand and, and say something against it. I'm not condemning him because Activision is there. And a dude from Activision on his board. I don't like that a dude from companies are on your board that you're potentially talking about, but it's business. You know, it is what it is. So I want Jeff to do better, but I'm not nailing him to a cross. I mean, like, look how awful he is because Kotaku made a, a really crazy headline that got people riled up. So I, it's just, I just don't like internet people getting pissed about stuff without actually reading the story. That's just like my number one pet peeve. And that's how Kotaku thrives, I believe. Well, we are um, younger than the age of 50. So it is expected that we won't read things. And That's true. <laughs> most, of, most of the internet's most active users are under the age of 50. And anyone over the age of 50 reads only the wrong articles. And then they spout nonsense. Um, mm. But I, I agree. The, the Kotaku t seemed to take this and basically just like throw a match on a pile of gasoline and be like, oh, everyone look at this. And then they ran the other way. But uh, I agree. You're right. It's, it's not that he wasn't necessarily... Um, it, Jeff Keighley is trying to stay a little bit neutral. Obviously, there are, there are interests in both ways. Like Activision supports the Game Awards, I'm sure monetarily in some sponsor way. I'm sure, obviously on the board and all that kind of stuff. So they need to maintain relationships. But I also do agree with you that he needs to come out and say something. And if, if Nintendo and Sony and Microsoft can all make statements about their involvement with Activision Blizzard, I think the Game Awards who profits much less than those other companies do off of their partnership can say something as well. And I think, again, 85 million people watched last year, which was, again, double the viewership of the, the previous year, which means we can only assume growth this year. There are going to be lots of people with eyes on this who might not know what's going on. This will be very visible. Um, it's a great opportunity to start change and a revolution in the industry. So, uh, yeah, I think you should take a side. 
and not necessarily say, hey, everyone who works at Activision Blizzard is awful and we should never support their company, but say, hey, this is a problem. We need to do better and make that publicly known, like his stance on it. So I think that's important. And I honestly, I think we'll get that. Jeff Keighley is a really, like, he's a good person. He's a good dude. He respects a lot of, like, he has a lot of love and respect for the industry as a whole. So I feel like we're going to get something like that at the Game Awards. Um, so I, I don't doubt that, but I think you're right. We have to call out Activision Blizzard specifically. Otherwise, it kind of holds no weight. And it's just, you feel like you're hiding. And like, everyone knows who you're talking about. Just freaking say it. If everyone else in the world can say it, why can't you, Jeff Keighley? Yeah, like, he's not off the hook. Like, he still needs to make it right. Like, he's saying the right things, where it's like, I, you know... Just like uh, we even talked about like last year, you're like, I, I want to buy this game to support these people, mm -hmm. but I don't like Activision. So you're like, I'm in this weird spot because I want to play the game. And, you know, us not buying the thing means the people at the bottom get in trouble for it more than the dudes at the top. Right. So, yeah, like he's not off the hook necessarily, but I'm also not, like I say, he's not, I don't think he's dead in the water. It's like, yeah, you have a chance. You have a big platform. Do something right. But I'm not pissed at you because you were like. Oh, we don't necessarily want to say we're focusing on this and not this part. I get why he did that. That doesn't bother me. But now that everything is brought up, yeah, you've got to say something. Um, if, if you're willing to protect your boy Kojima, you got to just at least be like, hey, sexual harassment is wrong and nobody should have to deal with that in the industry. That's like minimum. If you want to name Activision, you know, say we support these people or whatever. But yeah, that's kind of yeah, like you a, can't. That's kind of like a, a baseline. That's like. <laughs> I feel like no one would say the opposite. No one would say, no, uh, I have a right to sexual harassment in my industry. And in my, like, why, like, you have to, like, that's something that you shouldn't find too difficult to say. Sexual harassment is wrong. Yeah. People should feel safe in their jobs. Absolutely. So we'll see. I'll give them a chance. Yeah. I'm just not going to be like, oh, I read a headline and I'm pissed at Jeff Keighley forever. It's like, I'm going to give him a chance. If he doesn't fix it, then yeah, I'll absolutely jump all over him. But, you know, I feel like he's trying to do the right thing, but he's caught between a rock and a hard place. But whatever. We'll see what happens. I'll give him a chance before I write a headline and then run away and pretend like I didn't write the headline. Well, whether or not he comes through on Thursday will dictate if I watch A Muppet's Christmas Carol this year. So don't put that on him. Just watch it. It's a great movie. You know what? I can't support the Muppet's property you know that he is so deeply tied to. You know, well, he's not tied to that one. You know who would want you to watch Muppets Christmas Carol? <laughs> oh, shit. The Wolfman Tom Wolfman Hanks. Wolfman Tom Hanks oh. is back. <laughs> yeah, he wants you to watch Muppets Christmas Carol. It's a good movie made before Jeff Keighley was born. <laughs> <laughs> was it really made before Jeff Keighley was How old is no, that? No, it was made like in the 90s. I'm sure he was like 20-something. You never Whatever. know. <laughs> Jeff is ageless. All right. Uh, that's it for our main quest. We're going to move on to playtime where we talked about what we've played the last week. You've got some fun things on here, Adam, to talk about some things that I'm interested in your opinions on. So I'd love to hear what you played this week. All right. I played a couple of things. I went back to Returnal. I was mm, like, Hey, nice. It's game of the year time. I got to get, you know, my, my ducks in a row. And I didn't finish it because again, that game had super long runs. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I went back to it. Got partway through a run and then was like, good thing there's a suspend animation or suspend cycle because I don't really want to. I don't know. I think it's a good game, but I didn't want to keep playing that run. But I was like, maybe it's because I knew the suspend cycle thing was there. I was like, I can actually take a break now that I finished a biome. But uh, I played a biome of it and was like, I want to switch to something else. I don't know. I don't think it's a bad game, but I want to get through it. But I don't know. Maybe there's a reason it wasn't on Game of the Year list at, at Game Awards. I don't know. I don't think it's bad. It's just. I don't know. I got to try to put my put, push myself through because I do like the game. Which but just curious, which biome have you made it to so far? The second one. You just got to the second biome. Gotcha. I just paused. I just suspended my cycle in going into the second one. Cool. After beating the boss again in the first one. So yeah, I think it's a good game. I do want to finish it to maybe have like a definitive opinion on it. But I kind of see. Yeah, if, I see. I don't think a lot of people finish that game. To be honest with you, I think it's a good game. I just feel like it's, it asks a lot from you. So I'm going to keep playing that and try to beat it. I don't think it's bad. I just don't know if it would have been on my number one list. Anyways, also, here's the big one. That's not the big one. I started playing Skyrim yesterday. Oh, yeah? Oh, uh, yeah? Yep. All those. So what, there's the, the anniversary edition because the game's been around for 100 years. Right. But then there's also just a free upgrade when you have next-gen stuff. So it gives you the super fast loading, high frame rate, and then they add, like, fishing and da-da. There's stuff that is for free, and there's stuff you have to pay for so I was like, cool, but I've never played a rogue magician character. 
I only Ooh. played a warrior before. I have no idea. I just wanted to play Skyrim. I have no idea why. I, I couldn't explain <laughs> it to you. And I just started a brand new game, and I just played that for a little bit. Been cheesing it up, up, uh, leveling up. See, because it's nice because since I'm playing like a thief, you know, rogue magic character now, I'm robbing people. And before, like I quick save right before I'm about to like pickpocket somebody. Oh, and sure. before you'd have to wait like a minute to reload. And now I wait. 0.3 seconds to reload so i'm like pickpocket didn't work reload pickpocket didn't load re- and i just and my I, my pickpocket skill is so good <laughs> because i just keep cheesing the game because i have fast load times it's so it's so fun is the new yeah, like ultimate that. super fancy awesome edition of that out yet like the next gen updates all that stuff yes okay yeah so the next gen <laughs> updates are free if you already own and of the special edition for ps4 and xbox one this is the xbox series and the ps5 upgrades again like it's, it's super fast loading and all that stuff and then there's more stuff if you want to buy the anniversary but there is free stuff so yeah it is the next gen version has free stuff in it cool uh if you don't want to buy all the mod stuff and i played this game yesterday two days ago whatever it was people have been talking about oh, i'll play this indie game it's super good everyone likes it and i was like i don't know and then i was talking to my friend erica and she's like i played it i'm like all right erica i got you i started playing unpacking Man, why is that game so good? Man. I don't know what it is about unpacking. It's fan fucking tastic, and I couldn't tell you why. You could just <laughs> I can't tell you. I love it so much, and I, I don't know why. <laughs> I just had a great as I'm like, I know what the game is. The game is about you go through this person's life, and every time they move, it's like you're you, again, you unpack. And it's just like a really chill, you know, like 16-bit art style and nice, you know, relaxing music. And you're just like, oh, take things out of box, put it in its place it's supposed to go. And you can like move stuff around or whatever. And there's like environmental storytelling. You're kind of figuring out about this person as you go through. I don't know what it is, man, but I played the first two maps of that. It was when um, I think she's like a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old. It was like 1997. So you're unpacking. It's like, oh, she's got an old school Game Boy. And she's got all her art supplies and her soccer trophy. And it's like, oh, okay. So she's like, a li- and she's like oh, it's my first room ever. So it's this little girl, her first room. All her- she's got like 18 stuffed animals. And then the next one is like her first college dorm. So it's like, oh, she's got, you know, now you got shirts and the shirts kind of tell a story and she's got the clothes and she still has art supplies and she has one stuffed animal still. And she's got like a big Windows 95 computer in her dorm room and you got to unpack her kitchen. I don't know what it is, man. I'm just like, I'm really enjoying relaxing, unpacking this stuff and learning more about this person. Um, So I think it's very good so far. I don't, again, I don't know what it is, but the game is excellent. I think people should really try that out. You I think everyone that who said that week. game was very good was right. You brought that up last week, and I was like, I had never heard of it before. And now hearing you talk about it, I was like, that's 100% going to be my plane game when I fly home for Christmas. Like, I have like mm-hmm. six hours of flights. 100% going to just knock through that. Yeah, you'll be able to finish it, and then it'll be like, man, that was fucking cool. And just chill. I don't know what it I, I Maybe whenever you play it, you can tell me. But I'm like, yeah, I'm really feeling this game. I, I can see why people were like, yo, this game is one of the better indie games of the year. So I would suggest everyone try out unpacking Again, it's free on game pass. If you have game pass, it's also on switch and PC. And I, I think PlayStation is the only place it's not, I might be wrong. It actually might be on everything, but I know it's on switch for sure. Uh, so everyone check out unpacking. It's very, very good. And my last thing I want to mention, this is, is fun. We talked about, to you about this before, but my other podcast, I will miss it rolls, which is a D and D podcast. I L I S L E of misfit rolls or at misfit rolls on Twitter and, also on Twitch, season one finale was went up today, and then starting on Tuesdays at nine nine p.m. Eastern, we will be live streaming every episode. What this? Yeah, this week we're doing a little. So there's a, an interlude that's still going to be in the podcast service. So keep listening to the podcast version of that. Season one is done this week. There's an interlude like three episode in between season one of two, but we're also going to be streaming a different game. We're going to do like a little mini series of playing like a super hard dungeon or whatever that's fun so at misfit rolls on twitch tuesday nights i'll have misfit rolls on podcast service of your choice and then in early 2022 we're going to start streaming season two live and the fun thing about the season one finale is that anyone who's a fan of kind of funny uh cool greg designed a weapon for us and the episode title is based on the thing that he made. So Cool Greg came through and helped us out on our little podcast. And that last episode's called Stabby to Shooter. So <laughs> please check it out. It's a, it's a really good time. And I'm glad we're just, starting this Tuesday. We will be live streaming 
basically every week in playing D D. So come check us out. Twitch.tv slash misfit rolls. R O L L S. Dope. Uh pork chop in the chat says, Hey, watching while grinding Fortnite. Nice dude. Nice dude. Go talk to the rock. Season three. Touch his pecs for me and then say, Gimme Spider Man. I uh, this week. Oh shit. Is it Tony Stark? Oh shit. Hi, I'm Tony Stark, the cat. It's <laughs> <laughs> the cool cat. I'm uh I am Iron Man cat. My daddy did it. That's the way grandpa did it. That's the way I'm gonna do it. And America does it. Um, I played this week two games that are of note. One, The Last of Us Part Two. Everyone knows I've been grinding through that plat, and I finally finished the entire game again this this last night, actually, at one in the morning. What a, if you have not played that game? It's pork chop specifically, looking at you, bro. If you have not played oh. that game, but for some reason you fucking spoiled yourself all over it, uh, you should go and play it. It is such a beautiful, wonderful, amazing, completely emotionally dren- like draining, wonderful piece of art. And I uh, got my 53rd platinum trophy. Frick yeah. 53. Let's go. 53 is wonderful. Love you know it. what? Tony Stark doesn't have that platinum. Tony Stark can fucking game came suck out. it. You don't have no platinum <laughs> trophies. God. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> Tony Stark is dead. That's right. Rip. Rip Tony Stark. Um, so yeah, Last of Us Part 2. Fantastic. Yummy, yummy gumdrops. Second game I Love played it. was a game that I think we played Just specifically because you said you would never play it on the podcast. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, good friend of mine dallas smith who supplies all the photos for this and the love for my heart um he had his birthday last week happy birthday sir and he wanted us all to play first class trouble which if you're not familiar if you're like oh my god what is this game again why why does that sound familiar well it's a game that you got for free on playstation plus if you are a plus subscriber and it is like a visually looks like bioshock and gameplay plays like a broke ass version of Among Us, mm-hmm. and it is um, so much fucking fun and so like it is a very bad game. It is not a good mm-hmm. game at all. But I also think that the fun that we had with it was because we weren't playing it right, and because we were just a bunch of friends making a bunch of goofs so there there were five of us and then there was always like a random sixth person who came in that we never talked to or were on voice chat with <laughs> poor and, random <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and so you're running around i don't know it was a spaceship or a hotel or i don't something you're running around something and you're doing all sorts of weird tasks that the game does not explain the game explains nothing to you absolutely no nothing. tutorial no tutorial and in, including like if you are the imposter or they the, the i forget what they call it it's like some kind of robot Replicant. something you're a robot, basically, instead of everyone else being human. If you are that person, they don't even tell you how to kill people. So, <laughs> like, and there's, like, you Figure walk up somebody, there's no button. But anyone can push anyone. And the ragdoll physics, when you get pushed, you go fucking flying across the floor and just face plant and your arms and limbs go everywhere. It was always <laughs> funny. It is never not funny to push someone, whether you're good or bad. And there are champagne bottles everywhere. And you can pick up champagne bottles and chuck them at anyone's face. <laughs> and they just, again, go fucking flying across the floor. And so uh, I spent most of my games just focusing on one person. Whether I was a good person or a bad person, I would focus on one player and just fucking pelt them with champagne bottle after champagne bottle as much as I could. Mm. Um, and so that was a wonderful good time. But we realized about, like, I don't know, th- two or three games in that we were using party chat on PlayStation. So we could hear each other all the time. You know, the illusion is broken. We can yeah, chat. You oh know my God, I, I can't can believe be. you just killed me. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and then true. like there are messages in the game. They're like, you can now hear each other or you can't, you're now muted. And everyone, so we're like, mm. oh, it's like controlling the game chat for you, which is really cool if you want to play it legit. Yeah. But I think if you play it legit, then you can't have fun with your friends and it's going to be a bad time. Yeah. It can't be silly. Yeah. So, uh, again, it's free. If you've got a bunch of friends and you want to get drunk, uh, we weren't even drunk. We, we hadn't even drank anything, but we were just a bunch of fun friends goofing. Uh, it could be a fun time for a night. First class trouble. 
You ever expect to play that game ever again? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> not a chance in hell. Nope. And when you die, you turn into a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> like all hotel guests. Like, exactly. And what you're like a it's not like a regular vacuum, it's like a your Roomba. So you're driving around oh, your okay. Roomba and you can find like a little like a little kid's hat with a spinner on it, like a multicolor hat. You can you can do like vacuum cleaner races while everyone else is like trying not to die. And you're just like, ooh, I found a race and I can see this obstacle course. And you can vacuum up forks and you can shoot forks at people's eyes. <laughs> and, just, <laughs> okay. and just fucking pump people full of forks. <laughs> and, I thought it was so funny, and I was doing it. I was just going around. I was just filling people so they looked like porcupines, and nobody else was laughing. I was like, "You guys fucking suck!" And then I realized, did they get hurt? They can't see it. Like they don't know that they can't oh, see me. The vacuum cleaner. You. They can't see the forks that I'm pelting into their skulls. So it was just for me. Um. So yeah, it was it was a fun time, but not for the right reasons. The game's not good. Don't play yeah. it. <laughs> Play it once with friends if you're drunk. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's jump into our quest log. Take a look at the stories that we've got this week. We've got some fun ones this week, starting with nudity. Mm. What? This is the Hold Memorial Nintendo segment. The Animal Crossing glitch is quite naughty. This comes from Jared Moore at IGN.com, another internet website you can access on the World Wide Web by typing it into your browser. Ooh, just like... How Optimus Prime learned English in Transformers 1 by Michael Bay. Oh, my God. That's exactly right. He said, right. we've been on the World Wide Web. That's right. Sam are Witwicky. You, are you ladies, ladies man? man 420 69. <laughs> <laughs> what a bad fucking movie. <laughs> ah, woof. Megan Fox, though, with her weird thumbs and hot body. Put the cube in my chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jazz. There's a glitch in Animal Crossing New Horizons Happy Home Paradise DLC. What a mouthful. Which is what you might say if you get one of these naked animals in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and this glitch leads to the game's villagers going about their daily business with no clothes on. And nobody knows why. Uh, as spotted by Polygon, the glitch appears to take place in the DLC's cafe area, which was added when the DLC dropped last month. And... Um, the, the DLC comes with a bunch of different places you can unlock, but this one area, the cafe specifically seems to be where it is, and it's not really clear what the issue is, but everyone who works there is naked. And you know, octopus dongers, kitty cat dongers, big old bunny vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's, it's like, it's like if Hooters was done in... Freaking Fievel's go Fievel goes west. Um, it's a it's a good time. Go look at all these naked little animals because you're a filthy fucking freak. The no one knows why it is. Nintendo has not commented on you know, whether a fix is in the work or works or anything like that. But yeah, you go to the cafe and just careful not to get your booby milk in your coffee. It's it's a it's a good time. <laughs> the fun thing about this, I would suggest everyone look up the new story or you know twitter or whatever because it's it's very like they're like stuffed there's like stuffed animals right like they don't have they don't actually have dongers and, <laughs> and, 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 and peoples or whatever right. but it is funny like the octopus is like yeah it's just an octopus it's got a long tentacle whatever the bunny is weird because it 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 I, like his bottom half is brown and his top half is tan and he has no features on his whole body it's just completely void of any detail and then this cow has got I don't know what's up with this cow. It looks weird. <laughs> it doesn't look right. But a lot of them are just like, yeah, that's a stuffed animal without clothes on. And some of them are like, that's nightmare fuel. Yeah. But go look at your naked animals. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, an exciting one. It seems like it's a real thing. According to Bloomberg, this is a Game Pass competitor from PlayStation. Dun, dun, dun. Around. I'm not going to say his name from GameSpot because you remember it from two weeks ago when Adam told you to burn that name into your brain. But I will say it again. George Yang. According to a new report from Bloomberg, the service is codenamed Spartacus. Owners will be able to pay a monthly fee to play classic and modern games from PlayStation's catalog. It's most likely going to be available on PS4 as well as PlayStation 5. 
here are a couple of expected uh, details about it. Launching in spring 2022, it will merge the existing PlayStation Plus subscription and PlayStation Now, which is something that I have been predicting for the last two years worth of predictions that we've been making on this podcast and has never come true, but now it looks like it's coming true. PlayStation Now, the service as it currently is branded, it looks like it's going to be phased out while PlayStation Plus remains. And it looks like there might be three tiers of this service. The first tier will basically be PlayStation Plus as it exists right now. Pay for online play, get a few free games a month. Um, and then the second tier, I'm only guessing is PlayStation Plus, <laughs> plus plus. Plus <laughs> plus. Is going to allow players to access a large selection of PS4 titles. And then eventually some PS5 ones. And then the third tier, which can only be described as PlayStation Plus, Triple X, Return of Xander Cage, the movie, the game, is going to include extended demos, game streaming, similar to PlayStation Now or Game Pass, Ultimate, uh, and a library of legacy content from PS1, PS2, PS3, and PSP games. Thank you the lord that all these ps1 classics are finally playable on a modern system conspicuously absent from this is vita which um is is not mentioned anywhere in the report although it's probably because the vita had just so many different input methods like from the camera to the rear touchpad to the front touch touchpad the, like it, yeah. it's probably really difficult to do on a ps5 or ps4 controller now i know that i i actually am like I'm a little pumped for this, but I'm surprised I'm not more pumped for it. Where are you at on it, Adam? The initial story, I was like, that sounds cool. Because I'm with you. Just merge those two services together. Because no one talks about PlayStation now. I know some people like it, but it doesn't get any clout like Game Pass. Game Pass gets talked about all the time. No one talks about PlayStation now. This tier system interests me, but also doesn't interest me. I want to see... First of all, I want to see pricing. And I want to see games and availability right because i'll keep playstation plus of course it's good good service we get to play my games get free games that's that's cool really the playstation plus ps5 collection is the best part it's like here's god of war that's great i love that i'll keep that just for that so the second tier playstation plus plus where you get a large selection of ps4 ps5 titles eventually to me that sounds like oh we're just giving you what ps now is now and merging it with PS Plus. So that seems like it could be the exact same thing. The last one with PS1, PS2, PS3, PSP games, I'll do like I'll do that for like a month if I'm feeling to play those specific games. I think that's cool that that's a way to make backwards compatibility work. It's like, yo, here's all of the PlayStation and, you know, just pay yeah. this however much. Again, depends how much it's going to be. But that's cool. I like that. It's a good way for like game games. Games. Not game, um, barf. Like if we're looking at a barf game from yeah. the 90s or the 2000s, like that's probably a good way to do Prince it. Prince Persia still won't be on there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but my one question is, and I don't think we're going to get this. If they, so that second tier, the plus plus, not the plus plus plus, not the plus, but the plus plus. So when I initially saw the story, it's like Game Pass competitor. My number one thing is, I think it's just going to be what PlayStation now is currently which is not very good in my opinion if that second tier was like and i know they're they're super against this but like first party titles i would prefer day one because that's what the other guys do but if it was close to it i think i would be more interested in that so if it was like you know horizon forbidden west came out and then in like september of you know like six months later that year if you're on the second tier that's included that would be awesome again day and date would be the best but it just depends what that second tier is for me. Yeah. The last tier sounds cool for the people who want that. The first tier is what I'll probably stay with. But if it's just the same selection of PS Now, I don't want PS Now as it is now. So that second one could either be really, really cool or I don't give a fuck. And <laughs> I'm somewhere in the middle of that and I don't know where it's going to end up. They could do really good things or it could just stay as it is and then I just won't care about the second one and I'll do the third one once in a while. So that's how I'm thinking of it now. Please prove me wrong. If you put the stuff on there that I want on there, I will give you money. I don't care. If it's a good service, I'll give you money. There's no fanboyism here. I don't give a fuck. Can I play the new games re more, you know, on a, in a timely manner? Here's more money. But we just got to wait and see for that one. Yeah. I'm I'm like lukewarm, not lukewarm. Like I'm 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 excited for this possibility. I don't know if I'll end up paying for it or not. 
it, again, I just need more details. I need pricing. I need to know what it's going to be. But again, my my issue with PlayStation Now and the reason I don't subscribe to it right now is because I own all the PlayStation first party games and most of the PlayStation games already. And PlayStation Now is not a, hey, stream this game if you own it or pay us to stream it. Like, I wish that I could stream for free the games that I already own digitally. Mm-hmm. Um, But like looking at Game Pass and the thing that Game Pass does so well is the third party content that is like all of the games that I see at all of these different type like reveal showcases, conferences, E3, all this kind of stuff. All these games and I'm like, oh, that looks pretty cool. I might check that out, but are not like the big bangers that come out every year. Like I need to buy that day one and play that day one. Those are the games that that often go like unplayed by me. So games like unpacking or something like that. Like I would be much more inclined to play that if I just knew that I had it like, or that I had access to it. And if I, on a whim could say, you know what? I'm bored on a freaking Sunday morning and I don't really know what to play. Let me jump in here and see what kind of third party double a games I might be looking at or, or indie games that might not get all the press and stuff like that, that the big bangers do. So that's the, that's what I'm excited about it for. And then obviously like legacy, like backwards compatibility and preserving leg- legacy content is awesome. And I'm, I love that that's hopefully being considered here as well. But I think I'm most excited about just having a big catalog of shit. And again, in a timely manner, like mm. I would love, like Life is Strange True Colors is one of those games where it's like, I would probably play that if it still wasn't like 40 bucks on sale. Um, I would play that game. Because I'm curious enough about it, enough scuttlebutts going around, but I'm not going to commit forty dollars to it, just because I yeah I don't know that game. I don't know. I've never played a previous one. I'm not really familiar with Don't Nod and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's what I'm excited for this service uh, if it becomes a thing. Yes, it has potential to make me very happy, and if not, I'll just like I said, I'll keep the just PlayStation Plus and be happy with that. Or when I feel like you know the bar for whatever other reason maybe upping it to play some older games but yeah. that second that middle one could be a big deal they just got to do it right for me you know yep next story metroid dread developers are working on a new game this info comes to us from again ign which is Igna- what is ign actually stands for something right it used, used to, to stand for Imagine Games Network. That's what it was. Now Imagine it just Games stands Network. for IGN, which doesn't mean and anything. It used to be IGN it used to be 64, Games. right? And then they had yeah, to like, it used to be IGN 64. Like, yeah. oh, no, please give us our name. And 64 said. Uh, this is from Jared Moore from IGN. Metroid Dread ve- developer Mercury Steam is currently working on a new game. It is a third-person action RPG, which if you're thinking about, man, what, what past titles have they done before? They've done Metroid Samus Returns on 3DS. They did Metroid Dread. Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Third-person action RPG could be fun for them. Set in a dark fantasy world. Castlevania certainly lends itself well to that. And they're partnering with the publisher 505 Games, who recently did Control uh, from Remedy as well. So 505's parent and company Digital Bros released a press release saying that Mercury Seam's next game is codenamed Project Iron. And it's that third-person action RPG set for release on PC and consoles. So we don't know too much about it. Uh, but that could be, they obviously have a lot of clout right now with the success of Metroid Dread, some very talented people. Uh, so I know I'm particularly like excited about this. Um, they are some good dudes who put out good stuff. Even Samus Returns, like I played through a few hours of that game and the game itself, like the, the bones of the game that they remade were kind of dated and old to me, but the game itself like played and was presented really, really well. So I'm pumped for this. You got any interest in it, Adam? Yeah, I've got three things about this story. Ooh. Number one, I'm glad Mercury Steam is getting more work. They seem like a very good developer and off the back of Metroid Dread, you know, potential game of the year candidate. You know, glad to see them getting the respect and love that they deserve. Um, the actual idea for the game is, well, and, you know, like I said, Castlevania Lord Shadow, I liked it a lot. And that is a third person RPG. Also kind of tells you that you're probably not going to get another 2D Metroid for a little bit yeah. because they're immediately making something else. So even though that game did very well, and I'm sure they will keep that in mind for the next one, it's not going to be anytime soon. And uh, number three, I got a bit of breaking news. <gasps> oh, shit. I, I can confirm what this third person action RPG set in a dark fantasy world is. Yep, let's get the glasses out. Get the glasses. Wolfman yep. and the cool uh, cat. I'm Tony Stark. Snap, snap, snap. Bring the world back. Tell me about it. Breaking news. <laughs> 
It killed me. Uh, <laughs> I can confirm that this dark fantasy world is the Isle of Misfit Rolls, baby. We got a video oh, game. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, I made you put your glasses on for that one. Worth it. <laughs> But no, good for them. I like they're, they're a good studio. I fucking love Castlevania Lord of Shadow. I really do. Um, and everyone says good thing about the Metroid game. So good for you guys. Make your money. Live your life. I wish we were getting a video game, but you'll have to wait for season two. <laughs> <laughs> Castlevania Lord of Shadow. Castlevania in general. That's like my that's the the biggest franchise in my brain. It's like, God, you gotta go play more of that shit. Because I'd never played any mm-hmm. of it until we played Symphony of the Night for Barf, and I loved that game a lot. And I'm like, fuck, yeah. what have I been missing out on? Lords of Shadow was basically like, oh, we're not going to do 2D side scroller, but, you know, God of War and Devil May Cry are popular, so we're going to do that. And it's like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. So, I think that's That one was the like PS3 generation one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I played either a demo of it because that was when it was like almost every single game had a demo, or PlayStation Plus on PS3 had one hour long, like you could play any game for an hour, Mm -hmm. basically. Um, Yeah. I think I played that. I think I played I a little own bit it. of that, but I never. I think it. I own it in multiple places, but uh, yeah, it's a solid one. I mean, it's also like you know, at this point, it's like a twelve-year-old game, so yeah. But it was good at the time. I think. Hazelight, creator of It Takes Two, doesn't own its name. Demi Williams at Gamespot brings us this information. Take Two Interactive has been on a real bender of trademark um, filings the last little bit. And it has hit Hazelight Studios, who made It Takes Two. Again, that's the fuck the Oscars guy. And this is the like mandatory co-op game, It Takes Two, which both of us have played a little bit of, at least, and enjoy a lot. And they've hit it with a trademark claim, basically saying, because Take Two Interactive has Take Two in it, Hazelight is not allowed to trademark, It Takes Two. Um, they filed the to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office they uh shortly after the re- uh, release of the cooperative puzzle game and hazelight has been forced to abandon formal registration of the game's name it's interesting to note or important to note that like this is just the trademarking of this f- the phrase it takes to it's not like the copyright for the game or its material or anything like that they just are not allowed to trademark it like when paris hilton trademarked that's hot Business analyst Mike Futter commented on the issue on Twitter saying that even though Hazelight has been made to lose ownership of the game's name and can't protect it, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to have to change the name of the game. They could change it if they want to protect the name, but honestly, it's probably not worth them doing that. I can really only think, if I try to think of any property that like has become successful and then changed its name and like it's it's stuck, like I can't think of anything other than the movie Live, Die, Repeat, which was originally called Mm. The Edge of Tomorrow. Tom Cruise and um, what's her butt make beautiful pants from Quiet Place. I can't remember her name. Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, Take Two, as I mentioned, has been like on a real, like anything related to Rockstar or Mafia or Social Club, anything like that. Like they've gone after music. They've gone after like this. Um, there's a, a guitar like learning or academy or something like that called like um, Learn to Be a Rockstar or Play Like a Rockstar. And they mm. like, oh, no, you're not allowed to trademark that because we have the word rock star in one of our studios. So uh, I don't know how I feel about take two. I, I don't know. It kind of feels like a little bit like patent trolling. Like you don't own you don't own the right to use the word mafia or the word rock star. Like those are common themes. Like mafias are real things. Rock stars are actual people in the music industry. Like why do you take two feel like you have any kind of authority or or ability to go and say, no, you're not. We have, we have an interest in this name. Like that, that feels weird to me. Mm -hmm. My thing about this is that patent and lawyers and all this shit is kind of ridiculous. So I don't blame anyone at take two because if you've ever looked up stuff on trademark and patent law and stuff that you are legally required to send people cease and desist and go after them. So like if rockstar ever was like, the the let's make a rock I'll make you a rock star or whatever that game was called right and they didn't defend it then the next time like if PlayStation's like oh you know what we're making a game called this is the real rock star or something like that and you know Take Two's like you can't do that and you go to court and it's like oh well you didn't do it for that guy so you legally have right, to, even how fucking it. stupid it you have to do it and it's not just Take Two it's remember when people were fighting about who owns the word Saga no because every mobile game had Saga in it yeah. 
there was, I think it was King or whatever, you know, Candy Crush Saga, right. whatever, whatever, whatever. And they had to do it. I don't, it's just business is doing business stuff. And it's stupid. I'm with you. Just like, okay, remember uh, Immortals, Phoenix Rising? Used to be called Gods and Monsters. But oh, yeah. fucking Monster Energy Drink was like, you know, our company's called Monster. And they're like, uh, okay, let's, instead of going to court and arguing, we'll just fucking change it. Um, so I don't. Jesus came down and said, "Excuse me, my dad is God." <laughs> he says, "You sorry, can't use I'm that a, name." This guy right here. It's just dumb. It's just dumb legal shit. I don't blame anybody for it. You have to do it. If you don't defend, you get in trouble. Like I had a friend who made a shirt that kind of looked like a Sega logo, and then Sega literally sent him a cease and desist. And I'm like, sorry, dude, you can't do that. And it was like a parody. But they're like, sorry, you can't do it because you legally have to do it. Because if he goes and sells that shirt, makes thirty million dollars, and you didn't say shit. Like you said, you lose precedent. Yeah. So it's dumb, it's bullshit. But again, this is a lawyer. This isn't, you know, Mister Red Dead coming coming out of the studio, kicking your ass and say you can't fucking say it, it takes two. It's just like lawyer bullshit. Yeah. But remember, Rockstar also got sued because they used the Pinkertons, which again is like a real government agency back in the 1800s, and they had Pinkertons in Red Dead Redemption too. And I think the Pinkerton, whoever owns that, tried to also sue them, but like, you can't put Pinkertons in the game. They're like. It, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. It's fucking dumb. Yeah. Patent law's dumb. Lawyers are dumb. Laws are dumb. <laughs> Kill whoever you want. You know, you talking through it, and then like I, I kind of realized that maybe I am a little bit more on Take Two's side. Like they're not. Take Two is not saying you can't trademark it because we would like to trademark Rockstar. They're just saying like, hey, nobody should be able to say that I own yeah. this name because it's mm -hmm. very similar to all of our types of stuff. So yeah, I they guess would have to change the name. It'd be different if they were like, yo, change your name. It's like the game's been out for fucking eight months, and fuck you. It's just yeah. like you just can't trademark that name specifically because it's literally what our name already is. Right. It's just like... So they're saying, hey, hey sucks, like, but eh. you can't own the phrase it takes two. Like there are too many yeah. parties with similar things that have an interest in that name that like you can't be the sole owner of that name. It has to be public domain or whatever companies literally argued over the word saga and candy yeah. like there's <laughs> get, there's not you can't win just forget it yeah. <laughs> um moving on to godfall wonderful ps5 game you should not play ps5 launch game that you should not play it's making a confusing move this comes from eddie mccooch at GameSpot. real quick yeah. i want to interrupt you i remember listening to your barf of you you guys doing godfall uh was it a barf or was it what was it I think it was. I think it was like last November, December. It was. It was the same thing. Like we were gonna play barf, or we were playing Godfall for a barf and review it. Okay, that's what it was. Um, yeah, listening to you guys do that, like, oh, you guys forced yourselves to play one of the worst launch games. I'm very sorry for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are again, a year later. Godfall's coming back. Yeah. Uh, not. Uh, not. Not a good game. Not a good game at all. And it is, in part, somehow one of December's free PlayStation Plus games. But it's not the Godfall that you played at launch. It's not the expanded version with the Fire and Darkness expansion in it. It's a new version called the Challenger Edition. Which, you know, in gaming, we have like Game of the Year editions or like Definitive Edition. You would expect it to be like, yeah. oh, this is the base game and like all the content around it. Like this is the definitive version of this game. But no, this is something completely different. It uh, game director Daniel Nordlander confirmed in a blog post that Champion, or sorry, Challenger Edition includes Godfall's three end game modes, but none of the story content that leads up to it from the base game or the expansions, Fire and Darkness. And so you can play all the end game shit from this game for free, but you can't play the game. If you mm. want to play the full campaign and expansions, you can pick up the deluxe edition, which normally sells for about 60 bucks. currently on sale for $30. Shouldn't pay any money for it because it's not good and it's a waste of your time <laughs> in life. Trash game. But uh, if you pick up the Challenger edition, which again is just end game content, you automatically get boosted to max level 50. You get a plethora of skill points to assign high level weapons and new cosmetics. Um, so you can do that, I guess, if you want. What a weird freaking move. It's just a weird thing. So there is another thing similar to this. Um, because again, it's we're getting the whole like cross-gen stuff, right? Yeah. So in summer, they put Final Fantasy VII remake on PlayStation Plus, but it's only the PS4 version. And the PS5 uh, yeah. version was about to come out. They're like, if you get it free through PS Plus, you do not get the PS5 version of the game. And it's like, hmm, that seems sort of weird. 
I wish I would get the version of the game for the console I have. But like whatever. Again, it Square Enix is trying to sell a new game. They want to get you interested in the base one. And they're like, you know, pay an upgrade fee for the next one. Again, that one, I still feel like I should get the full version of that game because, but that one, I'm like, I'm not super mad about it. I'm like, I get it. This is literally a promotion to sell the new version of the game. Fine. This one makes no sense. I don't get it. It's a game that already isn't good. Um, not even exclusive on PlayStation 5 anymore. And they're just like, we're going to only give you the end game content and hope to God you give us $30 for the rest of the game. It's like, just just give me the base version of the game for free so I also don't play that. I'm not going to play it regardless. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But I just don't understand where you're like, take end game content and maybe you'll give us money later for the full version. I, that's, that's fucking dumb. This upsets me more than the Final Fantasy VII. Because at least Final Fantasy VII, I can play all Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII Remake. I just don't get that extra DLC. Right. Okay, whatever. I still get a solid game, really good game there. This one, it's like, you know, get the end game of a shit game and pay us more money. Yeah, and get out of here. <laughs> Porkchop in the chat says, Godfall, dope as fuck. I don't, I don't think that's true. I don't think you've played this, in fact, Brent. I don't think you're confusing it with God of War. <laughs> I, yep, I think you are, because this, is, this was not, it's a very flashy game. Like, it was very pretty. A very pretty game. But it is not a dope game. Uh, Final story on our quest log this week is... What is The Matrix Awakens? This is Jason Finale at GameSpot. Brings us this information. We've got... uh, According to a Reddit... um, What do you call this? Thread? Post? Reddit? Room? What is it? Board. Subreddit. Board? Subreddit. That's what what I was looking for. Sorry, I don't use Reddit a ton. Uh, On the subreddit, Gaming Leaks and Rumors, subreddit... Oh, it's fucking right after it in the notes here. Right Thank afterwards. You. Yeah, yeah. That's how they get you. Uh, an image for, quote, The Matrix Awakens, an Unreal, 5, an Unreal Engine 5 experience has been unearthed by searching through files on the PSN's back end. It depicts a city with the franchise's iconic green code and the logo floating in the sky. We know nothing else about it. All we know is that there's a picture on PSN of something called The Matrix Awakens, an Unreal Engine 5 experience. Mm -hmm. When it launches, this will be the first thing that people have been able to play using Unreal Engine 5 since it was debuted last year uh, by, not Mark Cerny, what is his fucking name? Tim Sweeney, that's it. Some other E name. Tim Sweeney uh, from Epic Games. Unreal Engine 5 is super exciting, has all of those like volumetric lighting and, and the amazing ability to like create really detailed models that are like all algorithmically made instead of high res assets. Anyway, Unreal Engine 5 seems super dope. We have no idea what this might be. What do you think it's What do you think it is, Adam? Cuz I here's what I here's what I assume. It's called experience. And it's an Unreal Engine 5 thing. Like they're really pumping that. I don't think it's a video game. I no. think it's probably more like one of two things. Either it's like abandoned, wanted to do. You remember that big old piece of shit mm-hmm. that that bait and switch garbage can, um, where they had the app and you could download the app and you could like watch the trailer, but with like haptics and shit like that. I have a feeling it's something like that, where you something in the Matrix and it's like some like a prequel comic, but it's like a two minute long experience where like you get to feel shit as you go through the city, or. It's like a behind the scenes. There's so much more. Ever since the Mandalorian started using Unreal Engine and basically just like those giant wraparound LED walls, it has been exploding in Hollywood. So I have a feeling this might also be a, this is ha- like a behind the scenes. This is how we use Unreal Engine 5 in the new Matrix movie that's coming up on December 22nd on HBO Max and in theaters. Uh, so go ahead and go see that. We are not sponsored by The Matrix, but it is coming out again December 22nd this Christmas. Excellent family movie. You go see this with your family. <laughs> Uh, you can watch it in your home on HBO Max, or you can watch it in theaters. Um, it's coming out on December 22nd. What do you think it might be, Adam? <laughs> uh, um, it is for sure, my guess, I mean, there's no there's no gameplay. I guarantee you that. It's not going to be a gameplay thing. Experience is, is the right word. Either like you walk through like a gallery, or you, I think it's like a walk walkthrough, or yeah, it's an experience is what they say. There's going to be no gameplay at all. Um, it'll be just showing something off the new movie and maybe they did something cool in Unreal Engine 5 for the movie or they're just using Unreal Engine 5 to promote the movie this is a commercial that will probably be very impressive is <laughs> what this thing is and uh, I mean I'll definitely check it out assuming it's going to be free I'll jump in there and see what's going on but yeah I expect it to be nothing more than a really pretty commercial which is fine 
Yeah. I think about the, like the, for the Spider-Man Far From Home, that's the second Spider-Man MCU movie. For the Mm Spider-Man Far From Home movie, they released like a PSVR Spider-Man demo. It was like, it was awful. It was very bad. It was not good. But again, yeah, it was basically like a five minute experience. It was just a promo for the movie. Go see the movie and also pretend you're shooting webs at some guy across the building. That's it. Okay. Probably something similar, but it's cool. Yeah. Unreal Engine 5. That'll be cool to actually be able to mess around in it. Because yeah. the first thing we ever saw, which was the demo with the girl in the sand or whatever, which is very pretty. Um, Her name is Sandy. Also no AI. Her name is Sandy. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Fantastic. Uh, that's still not a game, though. Again, that's just like a person walking around an environment with no AI to bog down the processing power or anything like that. But it'll just be cool to see people using Unreal Engine 5 more often. And uh, I hope Keanu Reeves shows up at the end and goes, whoa. <laughs> whoa. I hope he leaves a letter in our mailbox from the future. Uh, that's a I would love it. to Keanu Reeves movies. Uh, the um, Keanu Reeves movie, The Lake House, which I have not seen. But I know it's something about like he in a time-traveling mailbox. Yeah, you put something in the mailbox and it shows up in the past or the future. The yep. Lake House Keanu. Well, so I type in the Lake House Keanu and the autofill suggestion mm-hmm. is Keanu Reeves sneeze. Apparently he has a really noteworthy sneeze. It's a funny in the movie, sneeze a in the House. movie. Interesting. Yeah, he has top billing with Sandra Bullock. He's in it. Him and Sandra Bullock. I always get that confused with You've Got Mail, which is a Tom Hanks. Speaking of Tom Hanks. <laughs> Speaking Tom of Hanks Tom Hanks. Hanks it- who we have in the room with us. <laughs> It's crazy. It was just remembering like the early 2000s. They were like, let's make movies about people communicating. And that's the romance. It's like <laughs> either we send emails or we send letters to the past and we love each other. It's like, all right, early 2000s. You guys got this rom-com thing figured out. Yeah. All right. We're moving on to our segment from Adam. Put a record on. I want to dance with my baby. Segment from Adam. And you we have dance here, with your baby. Go to huh? Twitter poll thing. Yeah, Game of the Year Twitter poll. So I've been thinking, hey, it's that time. Game Awards are about to come out. And what are people thinking as we get to the end of the year? And I don't actually know what I, my Game of the Year is. Uh, so I threw up a thing on uh, Responding Fire on Twitter and say, what is your personal Game of the Year? What is your personal Game of the Year? As well as what do you think is going to win the Keeley Awards Game of the Year? Ooh. So we have some responses from people. And I got it pulled up right here. If you'd like to uh, be involved not in a future slow. segment from Adams via Twitter thing, go to uh, twitter.com slash respawn aim fire at respawn aim fire. Follow us. Absolutely. So Get the it. first one is from, I don't, so remember the like house you put a <laughs> thing in the mailbox <laughs> and, it, and it went to the past, right? Yeah. And then it, you got mail it was just Tom Hanks emailing because it was new and like right. finding a love of his life. Both so of them Holden mail related though. Yeah. Holden has sent us an email from the future or the past when he was still alive. Holden sent us an email answering this oh, question. That's right. That's right. Holden right. Memorial. So I don't know how naked that happened. Animal Crossing. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. So Holden says his personal game of the year, if he had to pick today, would be Metroid Dread. Ooh. Almost like he talked about that game on a podcast or something. Yeah. Yeah. If you're interested, go check out a review on Responding Fire's YouTube channel that you have not subscribed to yet otherwise we'd have a vanity name for it so go subscribe to it gosh dang it and then he thinks that death loop will win the keely awards award oh the keely awards Mm-hmm. okay okay next up we have asa gray five-star man who appeared on that episode whenever you were gone it was me him and holden look at that a little reunion nice nice. his nice. personal game like of the year dude. yeah he's a cool dude uh death's door it's just personal, which I still need to play. I need to find that game on sale and buy it because I've been meaning to. It was on sale for 15 bucks, but I didn't buy it. I forgot to. But Death Door is his personal game of the year, and he also believes Deathloop will win at the Keeley Awards this coming up Thursday. Mm. And last we have Adrian Wheeler. You know this person? I don't think I do. Adrian Wheeler. G.S. Quinchy Boy on Twitter. G.S. Quinchy Boy. Member of games, member of gamers advocate. Thoughts are my own. He, him, KFBF. Seems like a nice oh. fella. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, his personal game of the year is Returnal. I want to get there with you. I want to keep playing and seeing if this clicks for me a little bit more. 
And then he also believes Deathloop. <laughs> Unfortunately, unlike the rest of the gaming world, I did not like this game. So he didn't like it, but he thinks it's going to win. So everyone, look at that. Queen, queen sweep. A queen sweep. A clean sweep <laughs> of Deathloop. I think I'm right there the with Killian Adrian. Awards. I think I'm right there with Adrian. Again, there are so the, many things that I have to play. Again, I'm, I'm playing mm -hmm. Ratchet and Clank, thanks to everyone who voted for Barf. Uh, I'm playing Ratchet and Clank, and in fact, I finished The Last of Us 2, so I would have nothing keeping me from Ratchet and Clank. Uh, and I have to play Deathloop, because everyone's freaking gaga for cuckoo poops over it, and I have to, I have to be informed. But right now, mm -hmm. yeah, I think I, I'm with Adrian. Like, I think if I had to pick today, it would be Returnal. And then for your personal, for my for my personal, if I had to pick today. But again, there are so many things that like I haven't mm -hmm. played yet that I have to play that to, to yeah, take yeah. into consideration. But yeah, I think it would be Returnal for my personal. And then, yeah, I, I have no clue about Deathloop, but I know that like going into it, I knew that it didn't quite look like my type of game. But maybe now I think it might be. I don't know. I don't know. I mean. Speaking just on Game Awards specifically, yeah, that it has the most nominations in every category. So I wouldn't be shocked with that one game of the year at the Keeleys yeah. because clearly people nominate it for everything. Um, for me, I don't know my personal game of the year. So I'm looking on here what everyone's personal was. Again, Returnal, I'll keep playing it and see if more. I do like it. I think that makes my top five. I just don't know where it ends up. It could be very low in the top five. Maybe it goes up higher. It just depends. Um, Death Store, I really do want to play. And then Dread, I'm not going to be able to play, but looks very good. So I think those are solid games for everybody. Me, I have no idea what my personal list is. No idea. I have 12 games in my top five and they keep rotating around. So I need to finish stuff, sit down and write down and think about it. But everything that was just mentioned would, yeah, would definitely be in my top five, I'm assuming. Um, here's for the two I didn't play. Here's one that always gets left still. off my list that I completely forget about that also had a good time with. Porkchop says in the chat, I forgot to tweet, but my goatee is Resident Evil Village. Yes. Again, a very People great like game a that well. came out this year, too, that I always just forget about. Mm -hmm. uh, Porkchop, um, you are also... now required to go to twitter.com slash respawnamefire and actually respond with that information to the tweet. One, to enhance our visibility. Two, as your punishment. For liking Godfall. That is your for saying opinion. Godfall is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Um, but for me, I think, yeah, Deathloop makes sense at Game Wars, but I really do think it takes two. Just, again, based on people who vote, they like the shit that's new and different. I think Deathloop and It Takes Two both fit that category, but I think they also like Joseph Ferris. So I think It Takes yeah. Two has a good, pretty good possibility of winning that What's one. weird to me is that I so, really, really, really like It Takes Two, but I am not down with Joseph Ferris. Like, like that, he's that cool. outward fuck the Oscars, like that kind of like stunt kind of shit. Like, I don't know. I just feel like that. It's too much for rubs you. me the wrong way. Yeah. I think he's fine. I don't see him often enough to get upset about it. <laughs> yeah. I literally, I've I seen him once like every two years. The one time that I've, well, I've seen him in a follow up interview about it takes two, but I think that's it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Like I guess I got to get, keep thinking about my game of the year. We'll see when things get there. Is unpacking up there? Maybe it's very good. Ooh. I don't know. I'm real flip floppy. Uh, but yeah. It is time for Game on Game Show. The Game on our Game Show. We play a game called Game on. The Game Show on our Game Show. Game, 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 game. Adam, we've got a returning segment this week delivered to you by Totina's Pizza Rolls <laughs> and oh, yeah. Tony Stark's The Cat. Yeah. My dad. Um, This game is called Quiz Me Captain. It's me, Margaret. It's a fan favorite. Used to make Holden look like a fool playing this game. <laughs> not me. Not Adam. Not the Wolfman. Tom Hanks. Ow. Woo! Um, if you're not watching the podcast, one, what are you doing with your life? Two, we're wearing sunglasses inside. It's bright. I've got, first of all, thank you. Patreon.com slash Respawn Aim Fire. Thank you because you've supplied me with lights. I got lights on a kick-ass Black Friday deal, and now you can see me, and I'm so wonderful and wonderful and wonderful. Key lights are awesome. Key lights, yep, yep, yep. Um, it's so bright. We're recording in the middle of the day, so it's also bright now for Adam when it's not normally It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon so we, <laughs> for me. <laughs> we got to wear sunglasses and also like just to each other. Like I have a hella bright trajectory for my life, and you have a hella bright trajectory for your life, and we're just blinding each other with how bright we are. Mm, yeah. And... That's what it is. Like someone said in that song, we got to shine bright like a diamond. Like a diamond? What's, what's the song? Is that Rihanna? Shine bright like Rihanna a diamond? And, Rihanna and whoever was Captain around in 2007. 
Rihanna and Captain Crunch. Hey, here's the game. We got four rounds in this game. Each one lasts a, a different n length of time. There are different requirements. And uh, if you get through all four rounds successfully, if you win every single round, you get a super secret prize, Adam, the participant. If mm. you miss or do not pass one of these four rounds, you still have to continue through the rest, but you just don't get a super secret prize at the end. There is no... Hey, we'll see if I continue. What? We'll see if I continue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't have anyone there forcing you to, like, there's no repercussions for you dropping out of the game early other than just making for an awkward end of the podcast. So um, we'll see how this goes. We'll see. Uh, your first round of Quiz Me, Captain, It's Me, Margaret is 30 seconds long. Mm. And it is usually one prompt. And you have to respond to the prompt and successfully answer it in 30 seconds. Are you ready for round one? Yes. Quiz Me, Captain, yeah. It's Me, Margaret. Round one, 30 seconds on the clock starts now. Name five previous Game Awards Game of the Year winners. Sekiro, God one, of War. Two. Uh, mm. Ten seconds. Quiz me, Margaret, it's me, the captain. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. I cannot remember. You know what last year was? It was not Hades. 20 seconds. Oh, Last of Us Part 2. Yep, that's three. We've got five seconds left. Like overrated they switch game there. overrated switch game oh, oh 30 breath seconds wild. breath of the wild yeah and then you also could have mentioned what's the last i don't remember past that uh before breath of the wild was overwatch before that was okay. witcher 3 and before that was dragon age inquisition makes sense but i wouldn't have thought of that because i wasn't watching game awards at that time i don't think anyone well, was. like i was but like I, I wasn't like oh my god game awards i was just like oh yeah that's it because yeah. that was it was still like on spike tv and shit yeah, I want to watch it. No, well, technically, this was this was the Game Awards TGA, the mm -hmm. Game Awards through all of these. Those through 2014, but before oh, so that, that was, there was but, Spike TV's Game Awards. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think back to. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I got the last three years. I'm yeah, good enough. Uh, you win. You win. Uh, sorry, you don't win, but you did admirably. All right, time to so wrap you don't the get podcast. a super secret prize. <laughs> round two, second round of Quiz Me, Captain, it's Me, Margaret. You have 60 seconds on the clock this time. And this one, there are more prompts, but again, more time. Are you ready for round two of Quiz Me, Captain, It's Me, Margaret? Get it. Second round, 60 seconds, on the clock, starting now. Zachary Levi presented an award in 2017 and said, I have to pay a microtransaction to open this one, which is a dig at which game that released that year? Uh, Overwatch. Oh, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Do you have another guess? 2017? I don't know. There's I have to a, pay a microtransaction to open this one. Uh huh. Fortnite. Nope, nope, not Fortnite. FIFA. What if I said it like 18. this? <laughs> pay a microtransaction, I have to open this one to do. Oh, Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2 is correct. The next one, spell the game awards backwards. Nope. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the next one. Name the infamous Razor mascot from 2016. Oh, Razy. <laughs> <laughs> no. I remember that weird segment. Razy? <laughs> yeah, Razy no. the Razor. No. Uh, that is time. I'm sorry. You did not pass round two. <laughs> that was bad. That's probably the worst I've ever done. The Razor mascot was correct. Schick Hydrobot. I know everyone at home was thinking that. That is correct. Schick mm. Hydrobot. And I just learned today that there is an official IDW comic of a crossover between Chick Hydrobot and Transformers. Real thing. Awesome. Third round of Quiz Me Captain, It's Me, Margaret. It's a 20 second round. It's short, but it's usually a subjective one. You get to, a chance to flex your lawyer muscles here as you convince me. Oh, sorry. You have to convince me of something. I almost just read the prompt right now without timing it. Are you ready for round three of Quiz Me Captain, It's Me, Margaret? Sure. Go for it. 20 seconds on the clock for round three starts. Now, convince me that Vin Diesel presenting at the Game Awards was a good idea. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> I'm sorry, you did not pass round three. I was not convinced. <laughs> I can't. I can't lie to myself. Like, let's be honest. All right. He said ten. Ken, or she said ten. Ken. I guess that was kind of funny. I don't know. <laughs> final round round four uh this is a series of prompts i will give you 
two options and you have to choose the correct option. There was no rhyme or reason necessarily outside of my own personal preference. It's not even like a right or wrong kind of thing. It's just like one of them is correct and one of them is incorrect, according to me. Mm. You have 30 seconds to get four of them correct. There are eight total in case you have to make it that far. Are you ready for round sure. four of Quiz Me, Cat, Miss Me, Margaret? Yeah, sure. 30 mm -hmm. seconds on the clock for round four of Quiz Me, Cat, Miss Me, Margaret, starting now. Diddy or Dixie? Dixie. Oh, sorry. Wrong answer. He's got a hat and no pants. Swords or hammers? Uh, hammers. They hit Hell harder. yeah. Always big old, big old damage. Major fighter? Uh, mage. Yeah, magic, magic. Sonic or shadow? Shadow. He's got guns. <laughs> Fuck yeah, guns. And he's black and red. That's awesome. Shadow or supersonic? Ooh, supersonic. Yes, supersonic. Fuck yeah. You got four. Congratulations. And that is 30 seconds on the clock now. Perfect. Well done. You got one out of the four rounds. I, I honestly didn't think we'd make it that way. I didn't think. I, I was awful. I normally do very well. I prided myself <laughs> on being very good. That was trash. That was very bad. It was all the game I would awards retire related, if I was a football so player. I don't know if you yeah, caught that, yeah. that. Most things that came out of my mouth during that were all game awards. Um, if that wasn't clear. So maybe you're just not a game awards expert. Maybe we shouldn't trust your opinion. After on game awards, 2019? So. No, I'm not. <laughs> I remember two or three years back, and then it's blank. Oh, my God. But, hey, here's the thing. Holy shit. Tom Hanks fucked up, not Adam. Tom Adam Hanks wasn't even here. fucked up. Yeah, Tom Hanks is terrible at that game. I just took out my glasses. Tony, was Tony Stark nice to you? I, I, I like, go to the sunken place whenever <laughs> they put my glasses on. I would on. say Tony, Tony Stark is a cool cat. Okay, okay, good. Um, man, fucking Tom Hanks, dude. Right fucking sucks at video game trivia. Thank you, everyone, for listening. That, uh, that's the end of Game on Game Show and the end of our podcast. Again, you have homework. Go to patreon.com slash respawn aim fire. Uh, we're going to have a poll out. What is the date of today? The 5th. Probably next week. About what we're playing for Barf in January. So you can vote on that. We're going to have a new wallpaper out within the next few days for Halo Infinite because I promised that to Joel. So there will be a Halo Infinite themed wallpaper for RAF uh, for your devices. Uh, again, just like last week, they can only see you smelling your fingers. <laughs> they can't see that you're holding the barrel of the gun with your other hand. But it's great. Know, that's what's fun about it. Uh, and then you get to play with us on game nights as well uh, when we have those. So go there. Go check out uh, Isle of Misfit Rolls finale again, named and supported by Cool Greg from Kind of Funny. And I know that like 90% of our audience comes from the Kind of Funny audience as well. So there's a nice big vagina in the middle of that Venn diagram. That's what everyone right wants. In the middle of a it. nice big old wizard sleeve vagina full of Kind of Funny and Raph. Um, that's it, everyone. Thanks again for listening. And until next week, here's our usual sign off. The Matrix. Uh, Resurrections comes out on December 22nd and you can see it in theaters or on HBO Max day and date with the launch in theaters and it's a great family film to watch with your family over, <laughs> over Christmas break if you don't celebrate Christmas you just might well, you might want to watch this movie while enjoying a nice uh, holiday pie it, 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 it flavors up to you do you like cranberry? I, they don't make cranberry pies. You're going to be disappointed, but not by the movie The Matrix Resurrections, which is again launching on December 22nd on HBO Max and in theaters. <laughs>